Thank you, sir. Um, I would like to thank the organizer uh, for this uh, opportunity to share on water factors in China, India relations. I was, um, when I was doing uh, Anfield uh, on the topic of China's policy, China policy on Tibet, uh, I had a chance to come across many people, many experts, many uh, books, articles regarding India-China relations, and I developed a keen interest in uh, this topic, in this area. And uh, now, in recent time, I have a research scholar who is doing on ACTIS policy, problem and prospect in Arunachal Pradesh. And I also have some students who are studying in my university from whom I got uh, many information regarding uh, the impact of the China policy on water in especially the people living in the nearby the river Brahmaputra. And then I start um, doing a, a, a research with the help of these people and I am drawing today, in today, I'm putting forward this with this small experience and the kind of uh, research I had done, I mean, I have done recently. Here, I will not go details about it, but I will try to focus on three questions. One is why water is so important to India-China relations. The other question is how water factors determine China-India relations. And the other one is issue of contentions between India-China relations with the water factors. Now I, I am, um, now as uh, the previous speaker keynote address and George, uh, Major General, had pointed out many areas which is very, very important. And I will not go details again because I was trying to uh, yeah, put something, put forward something regarding those areas also. So it will be a repetition. I will go straight to my topic. Um, India, China, relation has not been cordial since India independent. The main issues in China, India, China relation is border dispute, TV issue since 1999. China military built up, China infrastructure development in, in nearby the international border. India ex help extend to the Dalai Lama and Tibetan refugee and water factors or water conflicts, which people used to term water conflicts. I mean, many people, many scholars used to term it water conflicts. These are the main issues. And today I'm going to deal with water factors. Water is one of the core factors that saved contemporary India-China relations. And why water is so important today to India and China relations. According to UN water, World Water Development Reports, about 2.2 million people currently do not have access to safely managed drinking water. And 2.2 billion, that is 55% of the world populations are without safely managed sanitation. Water use has increased sixfold over the past century and it's rising by one person a year. And according to World Economic Forum, the world is set to, uh, to face a 
a 40% of shortfall water supplies by 2030. This is the scenarios of water situations, which is there uh, with for, for the whole humanity today. Then India and China have been facing water scarcity and worsened in recent years, as we all are aware. Now I will not focus. I will not talk about Indians' water scarcity or water problems, but I would like to put forward here the China situation. China compares almost 20% of world population. However, it has only 7% of the world fresh water. At least one third of China lakes and rivers are unfit for human use because of the pollution. And 73% of water state that supply water to China fast growing city face medium to high pollution level. And how water factors determine India China relations? As we know, there are transboundary rivers between India and China. This transboundary rivers originated from China and are a major source of water for many parts of the country. China, in order to solve water scarcity, started many water projects, building dams along the Indian uh, transboundary rivers, including Brahmaputra. And sharing of water, water of these transboundary rivers, particularly Brahmaputra rivers, is an issue of contentions, as we are aware. Now, I would just want to show the main four rivers in India originating from China today. Now, as you see in the map, uh, see, in this river, originate from Mount Kailas and Pakistan and then Arabian Sea. The other one is Satles River and then River Ganga and then Brahmaputra. As the previous keynote speaker mentioned, China not only control water flowing down to Indian territory, but also the other South Asian countries. If you can, you can see here the um, yeah, Yangtze River. The other one is Mekong River, which flows to Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and then Salwin to Brahma, and then the other many, many uh, small rivers are also there. Now, this is an explanation only, so I will not go details about that. Brahmaputra, the most contentious uh, river in India-China relations, it is originated in the east, Kailas, east, east of Mount Kailas and merged with Kichu River of Central Tibet, flowing through Yalung Singpo. Yalung Singpo is a name which uh, China named Brahmaputra, then flow through the eastern region of India becoming Brahmaputra, and it's then descend into Bangladesh and finally to Bay of Bengal. Now, issue of contention between India and China. One very important uh, issue here is China hydro hegemony. China being the upper riparian nations control all these rivers which we have which i had mentioned before the source of water for many part of the countries not only many part of the i mean uh, uh, for many countries now china started to use this river water unilaterally regardless of lower riparian countries concern including india China have a very strong point, a strong control over these rivers, asserting that these rivers 
start from their territory and it is theirs. So therefore they control. They refuse to sign international treaties regarding sharing of water with the lower reparents countries. China started building of dams and water diversions projects for generating electricity to supply and to supply waters to men and China without the consent or without the knowledge of India. Now, these are the, I will show you this uh, Yalung Jingbo of Bamaputra, which start from Mount Kailas. If you can see here, and it flows down and then here, great bend here, and then it flows down here and Brahmaputra and so. So this is the area, this is the place where many dams or water projects constructed and been constructed. Now this is a very famous dam, one of the biggest dam, Jangmu Dam construction. Started in 2009, then this is the completed uh, Jammu dams. It is, it's functioning now. Then there are many more. And the impact of these constructions of dams and water projects, uh, hydro projects, is not affecting not only to India and Bangladesh, but also in China, especially in the areas where Tibetans, poor people are living. One very uh, important, if, I mean, one of the serious impact here is valley over, over flooded, flooded. Here in Tibetans, the, uh, the, the, the Tibetans are mainly normal people. They used to move place to place. And they depend on cultivations and, and, and this one, cattle rally. So for them, a big problem, mainly because of the valley over flooded. And number two, loss of properties because of the flood and the building of dams, loss of cultivable land and loss of grassland. And grassland, as I said, is very important for them because they, the main cultivation agriculture and as I said, cattle rarely. Now then impact in India, Flood occasion and unexpected loss of property and cattle, which I need to explain. And the other one is fear among people because they don't know when it will come. And then the third one is contaminations of drinking water, soil erosions, erosions, adversely affects the rich geo environmental and biophysical setting. Now I'm here, this is a picture took by one of my students. Um, it was taken, uh, you, you can see the color of the water. They, the people hardly don't know what is going on because without rain, water become so dark. And it is assumed that this water pollution is the result of construction dam and water project con construction in Brahmaputra. And this is the other uh, picture. It is a Siang River. It is the, the Brahmaputra Putra, um, in Arunachal. This is another picture recently took by one of our students. Then this is flood and the outcome of the flood, as we are all aware of this. Then, then fear among people as I see, they don't know what is going on, especially people living near the river. There are many villages, there are not only in, 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 in Bihar, not only in uh, Assam, but also in this hill, Arunachal, uh, this one, state. So the, they don't know what is going on. Sometimes flood came uh, all of the sudden, and then go soft, and so on and so forth. So they are living in fear because of such activities. Now, the other 
this is another village. And if you can see, in the middle of the village, there is a river that is a Brahmaputra. Then, then the other uh, very important uh, issue here is suspicion and mistrust, which General also mentioned about it. The suspicion and mistrust is mainly because of lack of communications or refuse to communicate by China. Uh, there was, in 2000, there was such case happened, release of waters was there and sudden flood and many people died. And, and after Doklam standoff also, China refused to release, the, share the, the hydro data, hydrological data, therefore, India, uh, many people, especially living near the river Brahmaputra, had a serious problem. Now, it was found out that this data, hydrological data, was sharing with Bangladesh and not with India. China claimed that it was not possible to share with India because a lack of data and there are technical problems with them therefore it was not but later as i see the data was shared with bangladesh now then the third one is the absence of water treaty or concrete mechanisms of water sharing between china and india China has made a huge investment in dams and has not entered into any water sharing agreements with India. This is another problem which leads to suspicions and, and misunderstanding. China depriving in India of water during land sessions becomes a possibility. It's a, it's, it's, it's in the hand of China whether they release or they stopped water. Now, dam, several dams projects, especially in Yalung, Singpo, that is Brahmaputra, assume significance since India is directly and indirectly affected. Now, to conclude, I just want to put forward some points here. Now, water scarcity is a serious problem and will be a wor worsen in the near future. The continuous water-related issue Tensions between India and China can lead to serious threats to development, peace, and security for India as well as for South Asian countries. There should be, therefore, there should be a serious dialogue and concrete agreements on water sharing between India and China. Government and academicians, academicians, researchers of India and China needs to collaborate to find out possible solutions because most almost all the time government agencies always involved and living behind or living out academicians academicians needs to come together and join hand in this regard because we need to study more details about this issue then the interests and grievances of the people who are directly and indirectly affecting the negative outcome of such issues, especially the poor people living in India as well as in China, needs to look into their interests and grievances are, are, are required to look into in this regards because they are the ones who are suffering without knowing exactly what is going on. China and India should also encourage the neighboring countries to come into treaties and agreements because they are a part and parcel. In last week, I had attended one uh, international conference where the Nepal professor once argued that not only China, India also refused to share or come into treaties regarding the sharing of water. And he was strongly, boldly spoke out because there are many Indian scholars also present that in the seminar, stating that it is not right 
just to blame other country. Those areas also needs to look into and invite the other neighboring countries, lower repairing countries to come together and have a dialogue and sign treaties and agreements. This sign agreements and treaties should be, however, on the basis of understanding mutual benefits, not only for India and China, but for also neighboring countries to have a lasting solutions. Thank you.